I think all of us Vancouver Canucks fans can agree, for this season, 2017-2018, we're gonna get a high draft pick. Right? Right? We're probably gonna get a high draft pick this year, I think that's fair to say, and I think most Canucks fans would agree with me when I say that. So, I'm making this video here today because there's one draft potential prospect that I wanted to talk about in this video, and that prospect is the great Rosmus Dahlin. Now, I'm calling him great because he's supposed to be a franchise defenseman. He's got the hype of a franchise defenseman, and across the board, across everybody's draft rankings, he's number one. And we haven't had a scenario where we've had a franchise defenseman with this amount of hype before. I'm not going to say we don't have franchise defensemen, because we've had guys like Eric Carlson and Drew Doughty and whatnot come through these drafts, but we haven't seen a player of this caliber, with this amount of hype, with this projection in the draft, in what appears to be a very, very long time. You could say, oh, well, what about Aaron Ekblad or Eric Johnson? Well, Aaron Ekblad, there was some debate on whether or not Aaron Ekblad would be the first player taken at the draft. There was some debate on whether Florida would trade that pick to some other teams or whatever, and Sam Reinhart would have gone first. But overall, the general consensus for this draft here is Dahlin is first. That's it. Sinetrikov is a very close second, but overall, a lot of scouts, a lot of media, a lot of draft projections, it's all Dahlin. He's number one. He is the consensus number one pick. He is a franchise defenseman, and he will make an immediate impact at the NHL level, just as he had as a 16-year-old when he played in the SHL last season. So, that in itself is just such a testament to what a good player he is right now. And I think, if anybody's watching the World Juniors, I mean... He's, he's the absolute cornerstone of that first-line power play alongside of Elias Pedersen, Brandstrom, Elias Anderson, and Alexander Nylander. Darlene is playing with the best of the best, and he's making such good plays right now. He's sidestepping through Team Russia on really significant and impactful plays, and it's such a blessing to watch this kid move through. He's so talented, guys, so this is what I wanted to talk about here today. What if the Vancouver Canucks were able to get Rasmus Dahlin and draft him in the 2018 NHL Entry Draft. Well, the first thing I'd like to establish, if we got ourselves a Rasmus Dahlin player, is that the curse, it would be broken. We would have gotten first overall. That's it, no questions asked. If we got Rasmus Dahlin, then that means that we got the first overall pick. And that's something that's never happened for Vancouver Canucks fans, ever. We've gotten second and third overall quite a few times, but never number one. And for the past two drafts, I believe that we were one lottery ball off on each of the past two drafts from getting number one, but instead we dropped to number five both times. And if Rosmus Dahlin comes to Vancouver, that means the streak of getting fifth overall is broken, and for the first time in franchise history, we would have drafted first overall. That's what I believe, and of course that's not the most important thing here that we're going to talk about today, but what we're going to talk about is what this means. Let's say the Vancouver Canucks did. We drafted Rasmus Dahlin first overall 2018, and he's ready to come and make an immediate impact at the NHL level. What does that mean? Well, right away it's basically saying, well, we've got a good team for the future. Because what this team needs absolutely no questions asked is defense. This team needs a number one defender. Number one forwards? Well, we got arguably two in Elias Pettersson and Brock Besser. These guys are going to be the number one forwards, and when people think about, okay, Vancouver Canucks offensive threats, who are there? It's Brock Besser and Elias Pettersson down the line. That's who everyone's going to be thinking about when it comes to this aspect of the Canucks. Number one goaltenders. Well, we don't have a definitive number one yet. We got Thatcher Demko in the system, he looks to be promising, and we also got Michael DiPietro in the system, who's also going to be promising. And the likelihood that both of these guys become busts, it's low. The likelihood that at least one of them becomes the number one goaltender of the Vancouver Canucks future is significantly high, because both of these guys are good. Number one forwards, we got that. Number one goaltenders, we most likely got that. Number one defenseman, however, we don't. And when it comes to quote-unquote good NHL defensive prospects, 
there's only really one, and that's Oli Olivi. And Oli Olivi, don't get me wrong, he's not a bust. There's no way that I'm going to say he's a bust. But he's not a number one. I think it's fair to say that Oli Olivi is not a number one defenseman. And he won't be a number one defenseman for the Vancouver Canucks going forward. At most, he'll be a fringe number two guy, a solid top four, capable top two defenseman, but not the number one franchise, like, outlining defenseman. So, that's basically the only thing that we need going forward, and of course, if we got other players, that wouldn't be bad. Like, it's never a bad thing to add good players into your system. But looking at the depth chart for Vancouver Canucks defensemen going forward, we got ourselves, okay, Troy Stetcher, he's good. He's not a number one, though. Derek Pouliot, he's not a number one. Ben Hutton, good God, he's not a number one. Going on to Chris Tanev. Who knows if he's going to stay on the team for the long term? I have no idea. He's most likely not going to be a Canuck. I have, I actually have no idea. Um, looking at the Utica Comets. Ashton Sautner, is he a number one? No. Philip Holm, no. Weirkoch, no. Chatfield, Breezebois, McEnany, Anton Cederholm, no. Looking at our prospects. Trampkin, okay. I have no idea. Maybe, no, most likely not, but Trampkin is a no. Rathbone, no. Gunnarsson, no. Candela, Broussard, no. That leaves Oli Olivia as the only quote-unquote maybe, and maybe doesn't cut it. Because if I asked you, five years down the line, do the Vancouver Canucks have a top forward in the league? You're gonna say, yeah, they got Elias Pettersson and Brock Besser. If I asked you, do the Vancouver Canucks have a definitive number one starter? You're going to say, yeah, they have either, it's going to be either Demko or DiPietro. But in this situation, five years down the line, if I asked you, do the Vancouver Canucks have a top defenseman in the league? You're going to say no, because Oli Olivi most likely will not be that player. He's going to be a solid top four, maybe a fringe top two, but he's not going to be a number one defenseman in the league. So what the Vancouver Canucks truly need is that defenseman coming out of this draft, and Rosmus Dahlin will change that. He will be that defenseman, and if we end up with Dahlin, we'll be able to run a scary deadly power play of Besser, Peterson, Jonathan Dahlin, alongside of Rosmus Dahlin, and maybe a right-handed forward. Like a Cole Lind. I have no idea, but... Nevertheless, Rosmus Dahlin truly is the last piece that the Vancouver Canucks need, and I'm not going to sit here saying that he's the only piece that they need. I mean, this draft, the 2018 draft, makes me feel really old because I'm, this is my draft year, I was born in the year 2000, and this is my draft year, it's just that I'm not draft eligible because nobody really scouts me in particular, but there are a lot of good defensemen in this draft, just looking at like the top 10 you got Rosmus Dahlin, of course, but then you got yourself Adam Bogfist. He's really good. Quinn Hughes. He's supposedly absolutely elite. Very good. And I know there are so many Canucks fans who are on the Quinn Hughes hype train. Then we also got Ty Smith, Jarek McIsaac, Ryan Merkley is another name that I've been hearing thrown around a lot by Vancouver Canucks fans. And, you know, it's... It, it's it's reasonable to consider these names because a lot of these guys, depending on where you look, depending on whatever prospect ranking you look at, a lot of these different defensemen will be in like the three to seven, maybe top two kind of range. So there's a lot of variety in terms of where people think players are going to be picking. And of course, since all of us Canucks fans believe that we're going to be picking fifth overall again, we're throwing out names like crazy. But the number one name that I feel that we desperately would benefit from is none other than Rasmus Dahlin. Because not only does Rasmus Dahlin provide the future number one defenseman of the future, that's redundant, but he provides the number one defenseman qualities today. Well, not today, in, in a year. If I talk about Quinn Hughes, I'm talking about, okay, the Vancouver Canucks number one defenseman five years down the line. Not necessarily the franchise cornerstone number one defenseman of next season, but five years down the line for sure. Rasmus Dahlin, however, if he stepped in, he became a Vancouver Canuck, he would be that guy next season. And there's no doubt that he's going to play in the NHL next season. So the Vancouver Canucks, we would really strongly benefit 
from drafting Rasmus Dahlin first overall, we would break our curse, we'd grab that first overall pick, and we'd use it for the final piece of building a stacked Vancouver Canucks team of the future. Forwards, we got that. Goaltenders, we got that. Defensemen is weak. Which is why the Vancouver Canucks ultimately should draft a defenseman this draft with, of course, the very absolute best option being basically Swedish defenseman McDavid at this point because he's at that hype level. I'm going to say that he's at that hype level. Skill level? No. He's not a generational talent. He's a franchise talent. But in terms of that hype, yeah, for sure. He's that hype. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Plus, and that's your trolls like Oscar Gaming. And bye. <laughs>